whenever I get to make cinnamon rolls, it's always exciting because I enjoy the outcome. So I'm going to add in sugar to my bowl. Next, I'm going to add in milk. To my milk, I'm going to add in instant yeast. And then using a whisk, I'm going to mix everything together. And then I'm going to let this sit for around five minutes until the yeast blooms. After around five minutes, this is how my yeast mixture is looking. And as you can see, there is a foam that is on top of the milk. So next, I'm going to be adding um, one egg. Whisk. Once mixed, I'm going to be adding in some salt. And then I'm going to add in my flour. Using my hands, I'm going to mix everything until a dough forms. If you have a stand mixer, you can use that to make your dough. Today I'm going to be using my hands. When my dough is nice and small but it is still sticky, I'm going to be adding in some margarine. You can as well add butter if you have some. So I'm going to need until the margarine is fully combined with the dough. After kneading for around 10 minutes, this is how my dough is looking. As you can see, the margarine is fully combined into the dough and the dough is stretchy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to form a ball just like that. And then I'm going to add in a little bit of cooking oil, spread the oil around. Once the dough is covered with the oil, I'm going to be resting my dough for around one hour until doubled up in size. So what you'll do, you'll keep the bowl in a warm area so that the dough can double up in size. If, you, if, you, if it is cold like right now, you can create your oven a little bit or if you have been using your oven, you can place the dough inside and then it will help it double up or proof. Yes. This is after one hour. Just look at that. So I'm going to punch in to remove the excess air. Sprinkle a little bit of flour on my countertop and then I'm going to transfer my dough to my countertop. my dough a little bit once done kneading I'm going to add some more flour on top and then I'm going to use my rolling pin and roll out the dough to a big rectangle make sure to push the rolling pin this will assist you to roll out your dough Then you should have a baking tray like this one, or if you don't have this one, there's the one which comes with the oven. You can use that one to make your cinnamon rolls. So I'm going to move over to this small bowl over here. So to my bowl, I'm going to add in some brown sugar. This is a quarter cup of brown sugar. If you don't have the brown sugar, you can use regular sugar. And then I'm going to add in cinnamon, ground cinnamon. Then I'm going to mix until combined. Once done mixing and your cinnamon and brown sugar together with the margarine or butter is combined, I'm going to move over to my, to my dough. 
it's not a perfect rectangle but it's almost there <laughs> so the next thing is to add my cinnamon mixture onto the dough Once done, I'm going to use my palette knife and spread the cinnamon mixture on my dough. I find using a palette knife very easy because it helps spread the cinnamon mixture on my dough evenly. It's like spreading frosting on a cake. The best tool ever. Once done, I'm going to fold in my dough tightly forming a rod just like that and then using a string or a tooth floss you are going to cut your dough into even sizes see how perfect the string helps me cut the dough You can also use a knife when cutting the dough, but I usually find that a string gives you a very clean cut. The last one, I'm going to squeeze these two somewhere. Once done, I'm going to cover my cinnamon rolls and let the rolls rest for around 20 minutes until doubled up in size while waiting you're going to preheat your, your oven at 180 degrees celsius my cinnamon rolls are ready and i am ready to bake so i'm going to bake my cinnamon rolls at 180 degrees celsius for about 25 to 30 minutes or until you notice a golden brown color on top of your cinnamon rolls so let's bake I'm going to add my flour in my bowl then next I'm going to add my sugar baking soda half a teaspoon of salt using a whisk I'm going to whisk everything together to combine If you don't have the whisk, you can use a sieve. It is going to give you the same results. And to make sure there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Once combined, I'm going to add in my cocoa powder. So I'm going to add two tablespoons. Then I'm going to whisk in. I added my cocoa powder at this point because cocoa, cacao or cocoa powder usually has a lot of lumps so I'm going to make sure it is fully combined into the dry ingredients. So I'll pick another bowl and to this bowl I'm going to add my wet ingredients. So to get started I'm going to add in four egg whites. So you carefully let the egg whites into the bowl like that then I'll place the egg yolk in another separate bowl so it's a very easy process and if you can't control the egg yolk you can also use the palm of your hands I'm just going to show you another way just pick the egg crack it on the bowl This is another way you can get rid of the egg yolk and I'm, I'm amazed because it has two egg yolks. Look at these guys. <laughs> I've never seen something like this. 
So I'm going to keep the bowl with my egg yolks aside because I'm not going to be using the egg yolks in this recipe. This recipe calls for only egg whites. So to my egg whites, okay, and at this point, you're going to preheat your oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Line your baking tins like this. I'm using six inch cake pans. So if you don't have that, I don't know what you're going to do, but it is a recipe for a six inch cake. So to my egg whites, I'm going to add in oil. This is half a cup of oil. Then I'm going to add half a teaspoon of white vinegar. A teaspoon of vanilla. Then I'm going to add in buttermilk. If you happen not to have buttermilk in the house and you have fresh milk, what you're going to do, you're going to add a quarter cup of white vinegar to your fresh milk and give it about five minutes. Then it's going to turn into buttermilk. That is how we will make buttermilk at home. So. I'm going to whisk everything together. Whisk for about two to three minutes. And if you have a hand mixer, you can use that as well. So after about two to three minutes, I'm going to pick my dry ingredients. I didn't add my food color at the, the moment I added my dry ingredients because I wanted to tell you about my food color. So I'm going to be using bright red food color for my cake and I'm going to add this in my dry ingredients. Then I'm going to whisk in until fully combined with the dry ingredients. If you don't have the powdered food color, you can use there's, there's gel and there's liquid, but I find the powdered one more effective for giving you a very nice color. So once combined with the dry ingredients, I'm going to add my wet ingredients into the dry. So I'm going to add small amount at a time. some more wet ingredients whisk in make sure to scrape the bottom of the bowl just to make sure everything is fully incorporated then I'll add the rest of the wet ingredients and mix you can see that nice red color. So when everything is combined, don't overmix. So I'm going to pick my pants. Then I'm going to add equal amounts of the butter into the tins. I'm used to eyeballing, so I'm going to add the butter in the tins and I'm definitely going to get it equal. <laughs> so if you, don't if, if you don't know how to eyeball, you can use a weighing scale if you have one. Once I'm done adding the butter in my tins, I'm going to bake my cake at 180 degrees Celsius for about 25 to 30 minutes. If you want to check if your cake is ready, you can insert a skewer and if it comes out clean, your cake is ready. So I'm going to put mine in the oven. My cake has been cooling for around one hour. So the next thing is frosting. So over here I have uh, margarine. I'm, I'm using margarine for this recipe and powdered sugar, vanilla and some milk. So I'm going to beat my, my, my margarine until pale white.
scrape the sides of my bowl just to make sure everything is being whipped up then i'm going to beat this for another two to four minutes My margarine is pale white, so to my big bowl, I'm going to be adding my powdered sugar. So I'm going to add in bits, and you'll find all the ingredients listed in the description box down below. Then I'll mix in using my spatula. Once everything is combined, as you can see, everything is coming along nicely i'm going to add in my vanilla i'll add a teaspoon of vanilla essence and a teaspoon of milk then i'm going to give this a mix once it is combined i'm going to use my mixer at this point So I'm going to be adding a teaspoon of milk and mix until it is smooth. My buttercream is ready and I'm ready to frost my red velvet cake. So, I'm going to keep this aside. Then I'm going to pick my turntable which I've lined with a cake board. So I've placed my cake on my cake board. I'm going to add in some of these delicious. <laughs> it is very sweet, very sweet buttercream. Then I'm going to level up using my off offset spatula. And you can see how gorgeous my buttercream is looking very nice then i'm going to pick my second layer cake and place it on top make sure it is lined it is aligned with the bottom one then i'm going to add some more buttercream on top this is going to be delicious <laughs> spread Moving up a little bit, then I'm going to go on the sides. So, this is how my cake is looking after spreading the buttercream on top. So I'm going to start off by adding some flour to my bowl. To my bowl, I'm going to add in my sugar, mixing using a whisk. This is to make sure the sugar is fully combined into the all-purpose flour. Next, I'm going to be adding in my resin agent. So I'm going to add in some baking powder, baking soda, Salt, whisk in the resin agents. Once everything is combined, I'm going to be adding in my wet ingredients. So I'm going to start off with a tablespoon of cooking oil. You can use any vegetable oil that you have in the house. Add in some margarine. You can use margarine or butter. And then I'm going to go in with my hands, breaking the margarine into the dry ingredients. You'll notice that the margarine and cooking oil is fully combined into my flour because the flour is a little bit crumbly. So I'm going to be adding in my milk as I mix in with my hands, working in the dough slowly 
so that it fully absorbs the milk. For flavor, I'm going to be adding in a teaspoon of vanilla essence. This is just to add some flavor to our ngumos. And for about one to two minutes until the dough is smooth. The texture of the dough shouldn't be like the one for making mandazi. It should be a little bit firm, not soft. So I'm going to knead this for about one to two minutes until the dough is smooth. Once everything is combined, don't overwork the dough. At this point, I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of flour to my countertop and then I'm going to transfer the dough to the, to the countertop. So this is how it's looking. So I'm going to use a rolling pin and spread out the dough. I'm going to try and make a rectangle. So as you spread out the, the dough on the countertop, make sure it's not thin like the one for mandazi. You need the, the dough to be thick. This is the size I'm going for. So I'm going to use a knife and cut out a little bit because I want to make perfect squares. At this point, I'm going to place a pan over medium heat and add cooking oil a tip about making half cakes the oil shouldn't be too hot because we have already cut out a very thick dough so if you're going to be using high flame the dough is not going to cook on the inside uh, but the outside will cook so you, the temperature of the oil should be low so that the cakes can cook on the inside so i'm going to show you what i'm going to be doing so I'm going to use my knife and cut out my half cakes. That. Now I'm going to cut across. This is what I'm going for. So the raisin agents are going to help our dough to puff up. So make sure you add the quantities that I've listed down below. And you'll have some perfect and delicious half cakes. Growing up as a kid, I used to enjoy having half cakes. And they were cheap that time. They were around 5 bob. I guess today it is 10 bob. So try out the recipe if you used to enjoy having your kangum. To check my oil if it's hot, I'm going to insert a skewer. There shouldn't be any bubbling. As you can see so I'm going to drop in my my dough just like that as you can see the bubbles are very small I'm going to wait for the dough to double up in size once placed in the oil and then I'm going to wait for around one minute so that everything can cook on the inside bring the flames to high and then I'm going to add a very nice brown golden brown color on top i'm going to flip the half cakes and this is after one minute and then i'm going to let the other side cook for around one minute this is how my half cakes are looking and these ones are ready to get off the oil so i'm going to use my schema and shake off the excess oil and then i'm going to be transferring to a plate look at my half cakes they look so good this is my last round so my oil has fully cooled i'm going to drop in my pieces of dough and then i'm going to wait for the half cakes to cook i love how my half cakes have turned out so this is so good i love that they're not very sweet they're just like the normal half cakes that you buy in the supermarket or or in the streets yeah because it is a street food so this is very delicious and i hope you try out this amazing recipe it's not a complex recipe just follow the recipe and you'll have some amazing half cakes so catch you on my next episode bye